Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Samsung 960 Evo. I did review the 960 Pro 2 terabyte, which is the absolute flagship model the other week and there was uh, lots of people that wanted to know about the Evo. Now the 960 Pro is epic, quite expensive, literally kind of the fastest drive on the planet at the moment. But I mean, as I'll show you in a moment, it does come in quite expensive. But with the Evo, it's much more affordable. So you would kind of expect that you were going to get um, uh, performance decreases. So essentially what we've done is I've, uh, I had a word with Samsung and I've got this one for just a short period of time just so that I can go over it with you. Now I've got the 500 gigabyte model. They do come in a 250 gigabyte model, a 500 gigabyte model and a one terabyte model. So no two terabyte with this one, but they do have an extra one at the bottom, which is the 250. So we do need to cover a few things and I'll try and cover it as a range, but the performance results that we've got will only come from the 500. So we'll cover the price first. I mean, to be honest with you, when you want to have a look at it, you know what an M.2 drive looks like. That's all well and good. The only real difference that you can tell between the two is the Evo has got an uh, orange accent on the, on the writing for the Evo, and on the Pro, it's red. And then the only real difference physically is the amount of chips that are on the actual M.2. So uh, just to kind of recap, with the um, Pro models, the chips on the Pro models were all 512 gigabytes, and then you either got one, two, or four. With the Evos, it's slightly different. Uh, with the Evos, the 500 and the one terabytes, they're all 256 gigabyte chips. So with those, you either get two or four. But with the 250 gigabyte, to keep the performance up, they are actually 128 gigabyte chips. So you get two of them. So that's how they've, they've worked out going uh, through those. Now, uh, we've covered the, the three kind of sizes and how the, uh, the actual storage is implemented on the drive itself. The other thing that we can do is look at the price. And I made up this amazingly technical graph so that you can compare them to the Pro models as well. Now we've obviously got the Evo 250 at the top on its own because there isn't a 250 of the Pro. But then we can compare the Pro and the Evo prices. We've got the uh, 500 gigabyte there, the one terabyte, and then the two terabyte is the one off down on its own. And they are prices at the time of going live of the review taken from the OCUK website as of today the 22nd of November, I think it is, or is it the 23rd? I can't remember. Anyway, it's Tuesday. So today, Tuesday. So you can see the prices there. So you can see that there is a big significant step going from the five gigabyte to the five, 500 gigabyte to the 500 gigabyte. You're looking almost a hundred pounds. And when you consider that's almost like 30% of the price there, that is a fairly big price increase. So we've managed to look at some of the stuff. Now they're all powered by the um, Samsung VNAND stacked chips uh, and they've also all got the Polaris controller on them. The only difference, as I've said to you, is the actual sizes of the chips uh, and how many of them there are on the boards themselves. So before we uh, go into kind of the, um, like the performance that we've actually taken, one thing I will say is that they say that they're all up to 3,200 megabits a second read, and this is reading from their spec sheets, which you can also get online yourselves. The 250 is up to 1,500 meg a second. The uh, 500, which we've got here today, they say is up to 1,800 meg a second, and then the one terabyte is up to 1,900 meg a seconds, and that's on sequential write. So when we go in, what we have done is um, we've done a few crystal disc marks and we've done some atos, but you can go and have a look on the OC3D website and go and have a look at it all there. People have been asking me about boot times and the like. Uh, and with a boot time, what you need to remember is if I was to do a boot time on a solid state drive, that means I have to put uh, windows on it. That means I have to go through and do all the drivers. And to be honest with you guys, it can be a bit hit and miss because then you also have to make sure that you have identical setups in the, the BIOS each time. You've got quick boot that you can turn on and off. It depends on, you'd have to have exactly the same system because it depends on 
the, uh, the actual components that you've got in, whether you've got the Wi-Fi turned on or off, it's all, it can be a little, it's a little bit more of a minefield than you may first expect. Now, if you uh, had a, um, uh, the, the difference between game loading times and stuff, I have been trying to look into that. And to be honest with you, it comes down to uh, such a small margin. Um, but really with these, they're about really transferring large amounts of data but also little files as well, because 4K files, which you'll see in some of these results, are where it trips up. Uh, but um, I have taken it on the chin. Hopefully in the future, I'll find a way that I can uh, transfer some of this information into a more meaningful way of things. But to be honest with you, when it comes to solid state drives, as we'll all know, it does just, it makes everything so much snappier. You get used to the way your rig goes and then you change your drive and then, oh, hello. She feels a little bit nippier. And I can say, if you're on um, mechanical, you should be on any kind of solid state drive now compared to the prices. It will be the biggest performance upgrade you'll probably ever make to your rig will be going from mechanical to solid state drive. Then when you get to the solid state drive level, going up to this sort of stuff, is really looking for those numbers and then eking out everything that you can possibly get speed-wise from your system. If you think it's going to give you more frames per second, sadly not. If you think it's going to make your game times load quicker, it may be marginal, but you'll be amazed when uh, a lot of the, 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 the actual game loading times, again, can be very kind of hit and miss because some games do take a lot longer to load and it's not a drive um, restriction it's just the way that the game works in the background as well so for all sake um, I have done it in the past and people have been like oh how quickly does this game load then uh, or is this game gonna load exactly the same sort of time and it, it, again it really doesn't work like that so I'm, I apologize if I'm uh, teaching or trying to get some of you guys to suck eggs that understand all this but there are a lot of readers um, uh, and watchers and viewers, however you like to call it, don't kind of grasp this sort of stuff. But I will try and make it so that it works coming soon, maybe, possibly. Anyway, right. So uh, when we look at the first lot of Crystal Dismark results, what you will see here, and it's weird that we have the hot and the cold results. What I did with the hot results is I literally looped benchmarks on it continuously, finish, go, finish, go, finish, go for two hours. And we, I managed to get the uh, temperature um, to 64 degrees. Now they say it's got an operating temperature of up to 70 degrees and that's safe. Uh, and what you can see here, we've got the 960 at the top and this is just for a kind of a bench, you know, like a, 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 a baseline for want of a better term. And then we've got the Evo underneath. Now this is because we use, this is uh, Crystal Disc Mark 5 and with the, um, the other benchmarks with Crystal Disc Marks that you'll see on the website, we're still using Crystal Disc Mark three for that. Now, I may it seem old, but they did completely change the uh, results. If you go and compare the two, the results aren't the same. They changed them quite significantly. But anyway, so the hot and the cold results. So what you can see on the right is uh, the right results are the same. And what we can see here is we've got a uh, right peak uh, of 1741. And if we compare that with the peak on the read of 3398, for the um, the Evo, that's all well and good, but it's the 4K result that you need to pay attention to, because what happened on the 4K read when it was hot, it actually halved. Um, now uh, I say hot, but it um, it was warm, so that's fair enough. Now uh, the, with the way that solid state drives work, you could get to the point of thinking that it could be the fact that the trim hasn't kicked in and the drive was kind of recovering. But these are read results, not write results. And literally within five minutes, it had cooled down. I run the test again and it was back up to being normal. The cold result was literally at, at, on after a cold boot. It was down at like 30 degrees or something. So um, it, it, it can, can on this uh, throttle, but it's on such a small thing because if you actually have a look at the hot result, um, for the uh, sequential Q32, which is 3398, and then it goes down to um, 3361. It's such a marginal, very small difference. It can almost be a run tolerance between the two. So it's only really the 4K 
that um, is affected. Now when we did test the, the hot and the cold, we tested it in a normal board as it would normally be screwed in. We tested it um, uh, on the Maximus 8 formula, which is actually kind of enclosed and there's got a big cover on it. And I also tested it with the, the add-in cards to cover all of them. And they're all the same. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter where you kind of put them for the heat and the performance, the difference is the same. So that's another thing to kind of go with kind of nicely. Again, with this drive, when you do um, uh, run it, the X99 results were marginally behind the Z170 results. I don't know whether that's because technically with the Z170, the, um, the driver's actually using the PCR Express lanes from a chipset rather than the CPU. Could be that, it could more than likely be something to do with just drivers and I would expect X99 to catch up. So we've got that with those crystal disc marks. Then what we can do is I'll just flash up for you the crystal disc mark uh, V3s. Don't forget, if you want more information on this, you can go and have a look on the OC3D website where we've got all the other Atos and PC Mark 8 and all the other sort of stuff that we've got there that you can go through and have a look at as well. So we've got Crystal Disc Mark V3 and essentially the Evo is only just behind the, um, uh, the Pro. And when you have a look at the results, it's pretty much where you would expect it. On the read, it goes from 2987 down to 2322. And then on the right, it goes from 2122 down to 81857. And it's, it's ridiculously... Uh, close when you think about the, the fairly big difference in price and that's when it really comes down to it because you guys asked me to do this review because of the price difference and I wouldn't say that the 960 Evo is too expensive it's just up there for the elite people it's like back in the days between the 980 and the 980 tie that sort of thing but if you're looking for a really fast drive at decent money, then these really are a bit of a no-brainer. You've got the three sizes that you can pick depending on what you need. Um, if you're planning on pumping some games on or you have lots of films on your rig or something like that, then you've obviously got the 500 or the uh, one terabyte that you can choose from if you uh, can afford it. But if you're literally looking for something that you can just put your OS on uh, and a few select programs or you know one or two of your favorite games at a time and then you might dump the rest off onto a like a normal storage, normal solid state 2.5 inch drive, then you've got the 250. So you've got all the options there and the performance, like I said, between the uh, Evo and the Pro is very close. But the most important thing to drive home with the Evo is it's still faster than anything else on the, on the graphs. It's faster than the Intel um, 750 drives. It's faster than the old um, SM951 and the old 950s. It's still a, a polarizing leap forward in performance. And I've now got to the point where I think these are incredibly good drives. Uh, but I would also go as far as to say I think that the 960 is probably being held back by the um, four times PCI Express interface because we've had a bit of a play with some of the others as well. And it's almost like that some of the numbers are exactly the same to the point where it's like, oh, it's hit a ceiling. We don't know. Only time will tell. But when it comes to the Evo 500, I think this is probably like the, the sweet spot between the two. Like I said, it's coming in at 250 quid. If you went for the, uh, the Pro model, it would cost you uh, another £100 on top. And the performance difference between the two, well, that is going to come down to whether you are uh, on a budget or whether you are just a speclist enthusiast. But anyway... The award we decided to give it in the end was performance because it, it could have been value for money, but then it gets complicated when we're trying to explain the difference between value for money because we would be pinning that on compared to the uh, pro. But anyway, performance award, so it, it, it's just rapid. And considering that we're getting this kind of performance now out of M.2 drives is absolutely unreal. And at this present moment in time, uh, it, uh, Samsung are stood in front of everybody else going, come at me bro, see what you can bring to the table, because they've got it absolutely nailed. So I think that's a good place to uh, stop. I've tried to do this quite quickly, even though I know I've waffled, but it's because I've been trying to give you guys as much information 
as possible because I kind of think that uh, if you're thinking about buying this, you're gonna want as much information about the actual usage and all of that sort of stuff as possible. Don't forget, if you are looking for more numbers, go to the OC3D website. If you found my review for the first time and you like the long-winded, I'm not here to just sell it to you, I'm trying to tell you about the product, product and not just read off of spec lists and stuff, then uh, please click the subscribe button. I've not said that in a while. Anyway, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you guys.